And thank you for being with us. And we have now Jay Dembani, Senior Product Manager at Avalara, who will talk with us about production, pro productization of API is a great term for a great mindset uh, change shift that we've seen. And Avalara is definitely one of the company showing it live. Uh, hello, Jay. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, thanks a lot, Mehdi, for such a wonderful introduction. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, as I said, Avalara, you know, Twilio, Stripe, you know, people talk about these API products that make complex stuff really easy to use, just delivering interface that makes it them uh, consumable. And, and uh, that's, that's the productization. Uh, we'd love to hear from you uh, right now. That's the idea. So Thank you. let me start. Uh, uh, as Mandy has set the stage for uh, the topic of the presentation, that is productization of APIs. Uh, in this talk, I am going to fuse the fundamental principles of product management and how they can be success successfully applied in the case of APIs. So let me start off with my introduction. Uh, I am Jai Dimbani, product management professional with 16 plus years of experience, uh, primarily in the B2B space. With Avalara, I manage a portfolio of platform integration products called connectors and extractors. As the name indicates, uh, I operate in the space of <clears throat> APIs. Uh, let me start with the agenda of the product uh, for the presentation. Uh, it is we will talk about what are the you know what how you define API as a product. Uh, we can start. We'll be starting off with building an API with a product mindset, and then I'll uh, touch upon the key factors when you are designing a product uh, in terms of the matrix, drivers, enablers, monetization, and the pricing strategies for the API product, and what are the business models, the common ones. Uh, which should be pursued. So starting off with a uh, start, what is API as a product? To understand that, it's very important for us to understand what is a product. A product is anything that can be offered to a market for attention, acquisition, use, or consumption. By anything here we mean is that it can be a tangible or it can be an intangible good, uh, which has got a business goal or revenue generation tagged to it, and it offers a benefit to the end user. What are the APIs? APIs are a connective tissue between different applications uh, and enabling the identification and authentication of a user and subsequently transfer data between the two entities. That's what APIs are. When you have to define an API product, uh, an API product is a digital product enabling machine to machine interaction designed with an outside in approach targeting the needs of an application developer. What we mean by outside in approach is focusing on the end user. That is one of the fundamental principle of designing a product is that you have to have a user in mind. And that's how you ensure that your API product is also designed uh, in, in, in a similar manner. Now, uh, I'll give you a slightly, uh, you know, a basic, very uh, simple use case, uh, which, uh, which we basically, you know, uh, give you an idea that how we use APIs on a day-to-day -day basis. Now here, what I've done is that I have considered a very simple use case of, uh, uh, you know, myself going to office, committing to work for an important client meeting. Now, to go to the office, I use Uber. And when I'm using Uber, uh, my location is identified with the help of Google Maps. And then I pay for the ride using my Amazon Pay wallet. On my way, I need to know about, uh, you know, the client which I'm going to have a meeting with. I check my Outlook calendar. And it has also got a plugin of uh, LinkedIn where I am able to see uh, the individual with whom I'm going to speak with in during the meeting. I reach office, I log on to my network using my laptop and uh, with the help of single sign-on authentication, I'm able to log on with various communication tools, including Zoom and Slack. I have my successful meeting and, and coordination and collaboration with my customers and colleagues. I finish off my day work and I am back to home. Uh, while uh, transiting back to home, I am uh, you know binge watching on Netflix and I am ordering uh, you know, using a uh, food delivery service like delivery. So, and once I reach my home, the, uh, the fare for the ride is automatically deducted from my Amazon Pay wallet. Now, in this seamless straight transition from office to home and home to office, I have used nine applications. And these nine applications are all the different products which are using different stack. And still, uh, you know, I as an individual with one or two authentication uh, between two different devices, I've been able to use them seamlessly. Now, how is it possible? It is with the help of the APIs. 
So the APIs are so all pervasive that you know we forget to use and we are that you know every every product which we are using in our daily life in this digital world is powered by the API. The next use case which it is which is related to a you know a regular it's it's a very common banking use case that now these days we have uh, a few years ago I would say uh, and in and still today in some parts of the world. Uh, there is a traditional process for the KYC, which is very manual, where I am expected to submit uh, the forms and uh, the photocopy of my proofs uh, to, to uh, the asset management company. And then there is an in-person verification where my documents are scrutinized. And then, uh, you know, I am you know, bank usually takes, uh, you know, eight to 10 days, whether my KYC is approved or rejected. It's, you know, I'll get to know only in, you know, eight to 10 days, depending upon which parts of the world you are. Uh, you know, it, the timeline may vary. Now, with the help of the eKYC, this complete process has been automated. So I can do the digital or eKYC, and uh, the entire process is happening with the help of, uh, you know, OCR, where I'm uploading my signatures, I'm uploading my document using Dropbox, uh, and then you know, submit my documentation where there is, you know, algorithms, AI and ML algorithms, which are verifying whether my KYC is correct or not, and I can get to know the result within one or two days. So this entire process of KYC, uh, this this is is using a bunch of APIs and uh, reducing the time period from eight to ten days down to you know a couple of hours to uh, one or two days uh, by the virtue of uh, using API. So that's the power of API we are talking about, and that's how uh, you know APIs are uh, you know incorporated in our day to day life. Now, coming on to an API and you know, building an API with a product mindset. So whenever we build any product, right, we usually have, you have a business objective in mind. What is the goal which we are trying to achieve with the product? And it has to align with the vision of our organization. Uh, Stripe has this vision of becoming, uh, in, increasing the GDP of internet. Uh, Avlara, you know, at Avlara, we have vision, you know, to be part of every transaction in the world. So, you know, how do we become that, right? What, what it takes you know, and the small actions, uh, you know, the small objectives which we are setting up with our products enable us to achieve that vision. So it's very important when you are building an API, you have to have a product, uh, you know, objective. And then, you know, outside in approach. When we talk about outside in approach, also known as API first, the idea is to focus on the consumer and right? who is going to be the end user of the APIs and their uh, you know, customers, right? So developers are the consumers and the applications they are building who are their end customers. So you have to think a level, you know, N plus one, where, you know, you have to take this outside in approach. And then we'll talk about, you know, what is minimum viable product, which is very fundamental principle of a product management that you don't go full hog, uh, you know, while building a product and, you know, how do we take the iterative approach? So I'll double click on, uh, you know, all these uh, uh, pillars of the product mindset. Uh, as I talked about, you know, what is business objective? Uh, you know, what is the core reason uh, for you to API to begin with? Right? Why do you want to build an API? It's very important. Uh, the idea is not to follow the rat race or, you know, because everyone is developing an API, it's an open API banking world, so you have to build it. No, you have to have a defined objective. As I said, you know, what is the vision? You know, what is the business purpose? What is the end objective? And the most important thing is, what is the problem that we are looking forward to solve with the API? Building an API is, is a time consuming and, and, and a costly affair. So you need to understand what is the business opportunity. Now that business opportunity can be tangible or intangible. We'll talk in detail in, in my next slide. And you know, what is the success criteria that, you know, whether if this API does not work or what, what defines the success criteria or what is an exit criteria, uh, you know, you have to have a, uh, you know, end goal in the mind when you are building an API. The next one, you know, is is the outside in approach. So we we talked about you know uh, when whenever we are building a product, it's very important to understand the user, right? What is the problem which a user, you know, facing, uh, you know, in in the day to day? What is, what is a day in the life of a customer? What are the problems, right? Are they looking for our ATMs, right? So that's one of the problem. They are not able to identify or locate our ATMs. Uh, the other is, you know, what is their behaviors, right? So uh, what, what's the day in a life? You know, what are the other financial products they are looking for? What are their needs? What are their wants? And what are the alternatives? Uh, they have, uh, they, they are trying alternative solutions. Are they using Google to find our bank branches? So on and so forth. So when you are building an API, each of these problems, uh, you know, have to be addressed with the help of API. So that's what we mean by the outside in approach. 
is that you have to have a focus on the end user. The next one is, is, is a core principle. Another is building a minimum viable product. As I said that, you know, API is, is something, it's not, uh, it, it's not a project, right, which is, uh, you know, uh, build and forget it. You have to continuously iterate. Uh, you know, you have to continuously learn from when, whenever you're shipping an API-based product, you have to build, develop, uh, you know, deploy, and then and measure the feedback with your developers and the applications on which they are building, uh, the customer feedback on your APIs, and then incorporate that feedback in this loop so that you are continuously evolving. A project has got an end date, a product has an evolution cycle. It's very important to understand the difference between the two. So uh, as I said, you know, this iterative approach has to be you know, supported uh, by a minimal viable product, which means that what is the minimum criteria for a particular problem, you know, if I'm shipping my product, right? What is that, you know, defines a minimum viable product, right? What is the least common I can deliver it to the customer or the end user quickly so that you know, I can test my hypothesis. That is minimum viable product. Uh, the other aspect, you know, when we are building an API, is 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 is, is the concept of the uh, APIs, right? Whether it's a private API, partner API, or public API. So most of the successful companies, uh, you know, uh, which we have seen today you know, with the likes of Google or Twitter, we believe that you know their success is primarily driven uh, by the public API. So. I, I env uh, you know, I, I env um, envision public APIs usually, you know, it's, it's like a tip of the iceberg, right? What you're seeing on the screen. Uh, the public API is just a tip of the iceberg. It is powered by the private APIs and the partner APIs. What do we mean by that? Private APIs is that, you know, you have an API program in place where the idea is to uh, connect the disparate systems, the, you know, the siloed systems within the organization, ensure that there is the effective, uh, you know, efficiency uh, between these systems when the data transfer is happening and then you know how we can take this internal success story with the partners uh, and then you know eventually to the public in the um, in my next slide uh, if you can see that uh, McKinsey uh, McKinsey company uh, uh, did a survey two years ago and where they came up up uh, you know, where they were analyzing the APIs of the banks now, if you see, you know, what are the uh, internal APIs which are primarily used for cost reduction and the operational efficiency, partner, uh, which are used for, you know, reducing the partner cost, you know, enhancing the distribution channel and the monetization. If you see the distribution, uh, you know, the share of these APIs, you can see that internal APIs are something which are, you know, 91%, which are focused internally and then you uh, you know move on to these concentric circle where partner is the next level and then once you have managed both internal uh, as well as partner then you go on towards the public it's very important to understand also that you know while you are designing an api that what are the business assets you would want to expose right so that also is one of the uh, way to think about the apis uh, then you know, what are the common APIs in the regulatory compliance? If you see, it's when, when you're talking about the BFSI segment, it's not just uh, they are catering to the APIs which are related to the PSD2 compliance, you know, related to account data or payments. They are also coming up with the APIs which are related to the banking services, which have nothing to do with the PSD2 requirements. What it does is, uh, you know, it, it enhances uh, the, the reach of the brand. Uh, it enhances the reach of your product. So you can see, uh, the 57 percent, the data point which I'm presenting on the screen has got banking services like ATM Finder, which we talk about, deposit, FX, uh, loans, and so on and henceforth. So, uh, you know, it's very important to, uh, you know, build the API, when that, that, that tiering of your APIs in terms of public, private, and uh, uh, partner APIs. Now, the other thing, you know, again, uh, you know, it's, it's building onto that minimum viable product. So you have uh, identified a use case, you have taken it to the market, it is working success successfully. Now you have to iterate that success cycle, right? So you design the APIs first, and then, you know, you go through this development phase, you, you document the APIs as Chris was highlighting, you know, wonderfully in his presentation that how do you document your APIs and what are the best practices? And then you have to secure it. Uh, and then, you know, you market and then, you analyze it. What, what it means is that you complete the entire development life cycle of an API. And then when you market it, you also have to take this product approach that whatever the feedback you are getting from your end customers and in the end users, you have to incorporate it so that it becomes an iterative approach. Uh, you have to ensure that, you know, you are uh, you're keeping a versioning control of your APIs. You are also addressing 
with the new use cases right the business process is are around you are also evolving a best example here in in the e-commerce space is shopify which every quarter comes up with the updated apis right every every quarter they will have an updated and enhanced version of the apis because the landscape of the business and in the uh, the, the geographies they are targeting is, is changing rapidly to address those business use cases you have to come up with the updated version of your apis which will uh, you know answer or respond to the problem statements uh, which are you know coming in these different geography now so now the product development is complete right it's very important to measure uh, the success of the product right and that can be done with the help of uh, key performance indicators so what i have done here is that i have categorized uh, the kpis into these three broad categories which is execution adoption in business so you have built a product now it's very important for you to measure it uh, you have to, to to track it measure it and improve on those uh, you know uh, parameters so from an execution point of view few of uh, the important kpis is effectiveness as in the number of apis which you are producing uh, it, it should be about when i talk about the number of when i say you know it's it's number of apis is primarily has to be driven by the quality not by the quantity uh, then you know the number of the apis and the performance of those apis when we are uh, shipping them into the market right what is the request time what are the requests what are the responses uptime downtime failure rate you know, all these nuances uh, you know are very important uh, to be tracked and then uh, you know the other uh, criteria is or uh, category is the adoption right so the applications which are built uh, on the top of your APIs, what are the number of the customers? How many customers are using it? You know, what are the applications which are being built by developers on the top of your APIs and the net promoter scores? To put it simply, uh, net promoter score is, 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 is a indicator for the success of your product. It indicates that how likely an individual will recommend your APIs to the another, uh, you know, developer or to a partner. So NPS is one of the uh, yardstick you know, to determine the success or the performance of your product. Then from a business point of view, the key KPIs includes the revenue. As we talked about, any product has got a revenue associated with it, uh, you know, uh, direct or indirect. Uh, so revenue is like, what is the revenue you, we are generating with the help of our APIs? Uh, what are the number of the customers which are using it? NPS and you know, what is the support ticket, right? If the developer is using your APIs and if they are facing a lot of issues, right? How fast and how quickly the, their issues are being addressed because you know developers are, are very important and i cannot stress more that you know they're very important in this ecosystem and you know you have to ensure that the support tickets are being addressed properly so uh, you know in terms of the kpis um, you know these are the three categories uh, there are a few more but you know these are the key ones which we have experienced uh, in in our uh, you know in our uh, uh, day to day interaction with the customers now uh, you know, in terms of drivers and the enablers, drivers, you have to think about the API drivers are the ones which will, uh, you know, propel the the growth of your API product once it is out in the market, right? So what are the key factors which will propel the growth of your API product is, you know, frictionless ecosystem, uh, like, you know, how your APIs are developed, what sort of, a, what, how many languages you are providing uh, your API documentation in, uh, what's your speed to market, as in like how easier your APIs are uh, for 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 the developers to build an application on the top of it, and what is the customer experience overall? Right, not just the developer, but their uh, it, you know the the end users of the applications they build. Now, enablers are something which will enhance uh, and and uh, and unblock that the growth your application uh, or your APIs will drive. Uh, enablers are the developer community having a strong developer community is also is always is always wonderful. Uh, what are the platforms? Uh, you know that are enabling like you know postman or or swagger and then again you know availability and accessibility of your apis with the help of the documentation it's very important so these are the drivers and enablers once your product is out in the market you have to ensure the sustainable growth of these products and that can be done with the help of drivers and enablers now here i would want to cite an example of uh, an indian bank rbl bank which is doing a wonderful job uh, in terms of uh, all the all the key parameters from a productization point of view we have talked about. So RBL Bank Developer Portal, you know, talks about the different use cases, payments, KYC, collection, and the value added services. And each of these use cases is, you know, supported by the, uh, you know, the documentation. So 
So as we have seen that, you know, all uh, RBL Bank is, is one of my favorite examples when, from a BFSI segment, which, uh, you know, I, I really like the way they're structuring their APIs and using their APIs as a product or, uh, you know, positioning their APIs as a product. Now, so now we have talked about, you know, how to build a product and, you know, how to productize your APIs. But the other important parameter is that, you know, once you have build it, right? How do you monetize it? What are the monetization strategies for, for the APIs? <coughs> and, uh, you know, again, uh, three broad categories, there can be many, but, you know, these are the three main categories, the indirect monetization. What do we mean by indirect monetization is, is about the provision of APIs free of cost. The idea is to gain the, you know, insights and enhance the market presence. So we have seen, you know, Google Cloud is one of the example in the SaaS space where they are providing their APIs for free up to a certain limit, right? And after that, you have to pay for it. Similarly, we talked about ATM Finder where an individual is looking for an ATM in their locality and Forex rates, right? So this the idea is to enhance your brand presence, you know, enhance your brand recall in the mind of the end consumer so that, you know, they can use, uh, uh, you know, they can use their your API. So you're offering them it for free of cost. So there is no monetization which is tagged, but what is getting generated is your brand awareness, brand equity, which you otherwise would have spent you know, marketing dollars, uh, you know, to make the end consumers be aware about, you know, your, uh, your offerings. The next one is the transactional monetization strategy, which is basically, you know, capturing the revenue through the direct usage of the APIs. Uh, this is one of the models we follow at Avalara. The idea is that, uh, you know, uh, how many times your APIs are being accessed and then you charge the customer, uh, you know, based on, uh, uh, based on the number of the times, right, they're accessing your APIs. Uh, um, so, you know, because you are, what you're doing is that, you know, you are exposing your critical business assets via APIs, which are very hard or, you know, difficult to replicate. Say for instance, if you have built a KYC mechanism, it's very, it's, it's not possible for, you know, smaller banks or new banks to build that sort of a robust KYC mechanism. So, you know, you can allow them, uh, you can white label your KYC services so that you know the smaller banks can use those services or a fintechs if they want to use they can use credit score is one of the other use cases where you know transactional uh, monetization strategy that is uh, cost per call is is being monetized the other way is 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 the product right so the product monetization strategy uh, stresses upon the delivery of the products you know you basically in this you bundle your products and services and then it's basically fixed is is, is dependent on the fixed fee or revenue share uh, Uber is a prime example where, you know, they're owning a marketplace, but at the same time, you know, they, 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 they take a cut uh, from the rider and uh, from, from the driver's revenue, right? So that's one way of, you know, productizing and you know, following this monetization strategy. The other way is, is, is the deposit solution. So Deutsche Bank in Europe, uh, you know, has owns a marketplace called Zinsmarkt. In that, um, in that marketplace, they offer, uh, you know, deposit solutions from the various banks. And every product that is being sold, you know, that deposit solution, they have, uh, they ensure uh, that, you know, there is a certain percentage of revenue that is, you know, that, that is accrued to them. So that's, these are the three primarily um, monetization strategies, which are prevalent at this point of time. Then to ensure that uh, these monetization, monetization strategies are working effectively, uh, you need to know, you know, what are the business models, right, on which these monetization strategies will work. Right. So we talked about the direct consumption uh, is, is direct consumption marketplaces and enabling ecosystems. That's these are the three broad uh, business models, you know, basic business models which are at work. Uh, in the in the direct consumption, you develop an API and offer directly to the consumer as as a as you know ATM Finder, FX rates, KYC. Um, these are you know direct consumption. Uh, there is other way, you know, to build a marketplace uh, where you map the producers' services to the consumers via API. Since Mark, uh, owned by Deutsche Bank, which we talked about, which offers the FD products at a better interest rates from the other European banks. That's the marketplace uh, business model. The third is the enabling ecosystem. And again, here I will cite the example of RBL Bank. So what RBL Bank does is that in India we have got a concept of non-banking financial um, uh, corporations (NBFCs). Uh, they use the RBL uh, because they do not have this, you know, developed tech stack at their end. So they use uh, the APIs 
uh, from the RBL bank to ensure that the, you know for the account creation, uh, for disbursing the loans, you know the collection alert API and the payment APIs. Now, what RBL Bank is doing is what exactly the you know eBay's and, and the Expedia's of the world do is that they are taking a share uh, by uh, you know from, from the revenue which is generated, but at the same time they are also enabling the entire ecosystem uh, around the RBL Bank APIs. There, there, there are many fintechs in India which are using their APIs. So these are the three uh, primary business models uh, which are uh, which are important for an API product if uh, for the productization of APIs. Uh, the if you have to follow yep. uh yep. Then, jay, jay just we need to wrap up because we 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 we, we um used all the time if you can wrap up like that's yes great. so these these are the four commercialization uh, uh you know opportunities for the apis you know digital platforms uh, where you know banks can sell the insights marketplaces where banks uh you know can own the marketplaces we talked about this mark Anything as a service where banks can offer their tech stack and resources and capabilities, capabilities for for the other fintech players to use, and then cross industrial partnerships where uh, the the data from the customer the more can be monetized effectively, and you know building products like spend analytics, lending, and BNPL that is buy now pay later. So with that, you know I'll summarize: develop the business use case, identify the potential sources in the API value chain. Prioritize the customer journeys and start small and build for scale, drive usage and adoption uh, with the help of uh, the, the techniques we talked about and ensure that you are you know, monetizing your partner network actively. Thank you very much, Jay. Uh, again, we, were, we invite you for a longer one because the content was, was really great. Uh, if we can sum up the talk in one sentence, can we say that the goal of a product API like Avalara is to uh, manage complexity and deliver it with a simple and business-focused interface for people to consume it. Yes. Yes, that's it. Perfect, Jay. Thank you very much. Thank and again, I really you invite you to check Avalara's developer portal and APIs, how they handle really complex tax, sure. whatever calculation systems into sure. productized APIs. Thank yes. you very much, Thank Jay. You.